So we're at Growing Power in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and they are a 1% for the Planet recipient. And I'm really excited to be here because I've wanted to check this place out for many years. When I lived in Milwaukee, I always wanted to come and just never did, but we're here. And this is Tammy. She's the uh, oh, communications... And public relations manager. Public relations <laughs> manager. And she's helping us and she gave us a whole tour of this place. We've been here for about two hours and it's extremely exciting stuff. One of the most uh, exciting statistics is that they grow over a million pounds of food per year uh, here in this urban farm, which is three acres, right? Um, and it was started 20 years ago, but it's really started to pick up over the last... 10 years. 10 years, yeah. and really over the last couple. The last year or two, with a, a lot of off-site locations this time of year, planting is huge. Uh, we have hoop houses and greenhouses all over Milwaukee County. We have uh, rural farms where we take a lot of our, we call starter plants out and, and plant them in the, the fields out there. So this is a big year for us. We're, we've experienced a lot of growth. Thankfully, we're going to be able to feed a lot more people. Cool. So what would you say the main uh, goals of growing power are? Uh, Mr. Allen has said, Will Allen, who's our farmer, founder, and CEO, he, he started out, he was looking for a place 20 years ago to sell his own produce from his own farm. And he wants to solve the problem of food deserts. Okay. But there are, you know, I believe that the closest supermarket here is over three miles away, and there's a lot of people in the neighborhoods who don't have cars. Yep. They just want access to real, healthy food is an issue for a lot of people, and that's what we're here, hopefully, to do, is to solve that problem. The revolution, as we said, it, it's happening. We know that. We're growing food here, and we have stores here. We're sending our food to restaurants, and it, it is happening. It's cool. exciting to say. It definitely seems like it is, and um, besides the fact that they grow a million pounds of vegetables per year, they also have 35,000 fish at any time here through their aquaponics. You can see all around me, this is all aquaponics. They do um, tilapia and yellow perch are the main fish. And with aquaponics, um, how it works is the plants and the, meat, the, plants and the fish uh, basically work together uh, distributing the nutrients, the nitrates, and it's a very cool system. And another thing that's great is they compost 40 million pounds of waste per year here. 43 million Four. pounds of waste are prevented from going into local landfills. 43 million pounds! That's crazy! I mean, that's a yeah. lot of waste that we are turning into good soil. If there is anything that Mr. Allen talks about, I would say almost more than anything, what we do is all about the soil. We grow healthy soil that we grow ourselves, and it's about half of that is food waste that we get donated. We have a lot of great partners all over the city of Milwaukee, uh, local breweries that give us beer mash. We have uh, coffee roasters that give us coffee grounds, restaurants and food distributors that give us you know, food that they can't use, and we get mulch and you name it, all those sources together, and we're making soil, and it's cool. pretty cool. So as you know, on this trip, I've been learning just how much food waste we have in the United States. 30% of the food that Americans purchase goes into the dumpster, which is $165 billion worth of food a year. So basically, money is being dumped right into the dumpster, but it's even more time intensive than dumping the money. So they actually are able to divert 21 million pounds of food per year from what would go to the landfills and instead turning it into a product that is being used to grow food. And that's uh, kind of the way that the earth is designed and the way that it should be. So it's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, their website's growingpower.org, right? Mm -hmm. And Follow uh, us on Facebook and Twitter. Lots of updates. We'll be talking about their visit. <laughs> Facebook.com slash growing power. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we'll be doing a post about them, of course. And uh, really excited. If you want to learn about good ways to get involved with the community, if you're here in Milwaukee, they accept volunteers and they're just doing amazing things. So, growingpower.org, and you'll learn more about them. Thanks, Thanks for, for having coming. us. Thanks for coming. Oh, fun. Thanks for coming. This is fun. Glad we could spread the word. That's cool. Yeah.
welcome to Rain Fresh Harvest. My name is Barry Adler. I'm growing on approximately a little less than an acre total. This up front here is only maybe a quarter acre total with the greenhouses. I've got about another half acre to three quarters acres back the other side of the house. I've got some fruit trees. I've got um, field tomato crops out there, um, jalapenos, basil. Uh, down here out in the field I've got a few tomatoes, basil, uh, blackberries, uh, a variety of peppers, um, some cucumbers, and um, in the greenhouses here I've got mizuna, arugula, cucumbers, spearmint, um, and I've got a variety of fish uh, aquaponics operations in there too. Yellow perch, uh, bluegills, koi. I originally looked at setting up a hydroponic organic tomato and lettuce operation Crop King has uh, had at the time some of the first greenhouses with that design. But as I did my due diligence, I found out my water was so terrible I would have to treat the water or run 35% of the water and leach every time I watered the plant. So I decided that wasn't going to work because when I looked at the cost of uh, reverse osmosis, it was going to cost me two cents more per pound for the tomatoes than I was going to be able to sell them for. Due to the water issues, I decided I had to design my own greenhouse and I had been working at Scott's as a researcher for 22 years and I had my job was outsourced so I had some severance money to look into a new business and at the time I was interested in renewable energy but back in 2004 there was absolutely no market for it. So my background's in horticulture, I've got a master's degree in horticulture, I decided well I've got this land, I might as well grow things and uh, do that as my business so I, I, I started in and decided well I've got to design my own greenhouse to catch the water and I thought well I can put renewable energy on it also because at that time was the first year that the grants were available through the state of Ohio so I combined both of my interests and designed this and took about a year and a half of figuring out all the ins and outs and looking at designs that seemed to work and also different types of aquaponics that seemed to work and I would kind of designed and took off from there and designed my own system. This is an off-the-grid bio-integrated greenhouse and it's powered by the sun and the wind. We have a one kilowatt Bergie XL wind turbine, 2.1 kilowatts photovoltaics, there's 12 Siemens they were originally 175 watts each, but one of them had to be replaced because I got a bullet hole in one of them Gosh. about three years ago. And that's a 190 watt panel because they didn't make them 175 watts 10 years later. So, in fact, those same size panels now, you can get almost about 400 watts in the same square footage. These are solar thermal collectors. Uh, I have a hot, uh, a water drain back system. I originally started with um, a propylene uh, glycol system, but it ended up because of the way it was designed, it was letting air in the lines and the copper was starting to degrade. So another guy came along who had had more experience in this area and he said, no, get the um, propylene glycol out of there and uh, just use straight water and, and it's worked fine ever since. Uh, so at 34 degrees, everything drains back into the building so the pipes don't freeze in the winter time. And this is hooked into a heat exchanger, and I'll show you when we get in there, that pumps the hot water or takes the heat out of the water, puts it in a storage tank, or when that storage tank reaches a certain temperature, then I have PEX tubing and a concrete floor so the floor itself acts as a, a thermal storage. I've got two tanks that I catch water in. One's underground cistern, one's on the second floor. Each of them has a capacity to uh, catch 500 gallons, so I catch about a thousand gallons of water. All it takes is about a half inch of rain and that fills up that 500 gallon tank. If there's no wind or no sun, I've got battery backup storage that'll hold about three to four days running everything, but then when I know I'm not going to have sun or wind, I start shutting down things. i got about 40 different circuits in there. I can flip everything off and only run the essential systems, the bubblers for the fish, and irrigation and uh, fans inside the greenhouse. So I can stretch it out to five, six days if I need to. Uh, when that runs out, then I have a uh, gasoline generator, which...